In this video, we will see how the Fibonacci 60-digit cipher generates the 216-digit matrix. But first, let us take another look at the seed of life and its underlying pattern that continues for all eternity. In the previous video, we saw how the numbers start to form a flowering pattern when we combine seven of the Fibonacci building blocks into the seed of life. It is important to note that the Fibonacci 60 digit repeat cycle continues for all eternity and when we look at the seed of life we are looking at a fractal. We are looking at a single seed floating upon an eternal sea but all of the information from the whole exists in the single piece. Like the DNA in your individual cells that store the information of your entire self. The Fibonacci sequence creates this eternal sea of building blocks and is what I would equate to the fabric of space-time or what the ancients called the ether. This is the underlying fabric or eternal matrix upon which the universe is built. Many ancient cultures and even modern scientific theories talk about how everything in the universe is connected to everything else. The butterfly effect implies that the butterfly flapping its wings on one side of the world can cause a storm on the other. If you look at this eternal matrix, you can see how every circle is literally connected to every other circle. A change to any part of this matrix will mathematically be communicated to every other part. Everything is connected to everything else and is indeed a part of the whole. I would like to make a comparison here, but please do not take this analogy literally. This is simply a way of trying to explain this underlying matrix by comparing it to our current level of technology. If you look at an LCD or LED monitor, you are able to project an image onto the screen by activating different pixels at a certain point in time. If you zoom in very closely to an LCD image, you will notice that the picture is made up of millions of tiny blocks called pixels. Using one liquid crystal per pixel, each pixel can be made to allow or block light. Thus, an image can easily be created using an active matrix technique. Basically, tiny switching transistors arranged in a matrix rapidly switch the LCD's pixels on and off. Now, without drawing a direct comparison, you can think about the Fibonacci matrix working in a similar way. We have an eternal matrix or C of these building blocks that form the fabric or screen of the universe. The physical world is then projected onto this matrix by activating specific areas at a specific point in time. Think of it as these little building blocks being turned on and off like the pixels in the LCD screen. The matrix itself is simply an eternal sea of numbers or information. Information can be stored in the form of light. Light is information. Light stores and carries information. The entire universe is an image or light show being projected as these individual building blocks are being turned on and off over a period of time. I believe that what scientists call atoms are simply these individual pixels or building blocks of information. An atom is not a physical object but simply a quanta or packet of information made up of energy. Just because we give something a name does not mean that it now physically exists. The study of the atom is the study of a quanta of energy and not the study of a physical object. I believe all of modern science will agree with that statement. The Higgs boson or God particle is not a physical particle but a field of energy that gives an atom its mass. An atom is probably less like a two-dimensional pixel on a flat screen and probably more like a three-dimensional voxel in a 3D space. But that is only relative to us. 
Energy itself is light, and light is information. Light has no actual size or physical form. An atom is a quanta of mathematical information. Many scientists won't accept a theory unless you can provide the mathematical data. I believe the opposite is actually true. A scientific theory can only exist because the mathematical relationship already exists. We can only conceive of something because the math exists. Our brains construct the physical world from the mathematical information carried in the light. The study of an atom is simply the study of a mathematical relationship. The terms electron, proton and neutron are simply names we have given to a pre-existing mathematical relationship. To provide the maths for your theory is simply a way of reverse engineering what already exists. There is no physical universe. There is only the eternal matrix stored in the light. We experience the universe as a story playing out relative to us, the viewer. That is why every object appears to be at the center of its own universe. You are watching the show from your perspective. But you are not the center of the universe. The universe has no center. It is eternal. Think of it as any other movie you have watched for the first time. The entire movie already exists. You only experience the story and feel the emotions as the story unfolds before you. For that brief moment, it's all happening for your benefit. Tomorrow, someone else will watch the same movie and experience it for their first time as though it were made just for them. This, of course, raises many philosophical and spiritual questions about the purpose of life, the oneness of all things, and the existence of God. I was hoping to get to the 216 digit matrix in this video, but unfortunately I am out of time. Apologies if this video got too technical. My aim is to show you that all of reality is a virtual simulation and as our technology advances, we will start to understand this concept more and more. It is with that idea in mind that I have tried to integrate my appearance in this video with an avatar in a virtual space. There are in fact three forms of reality present in this video. One is pure virtual reality, where I had to animate everything. The second is a recording of myself here in what we call the real world. And the third is a hybrid of reality and virtual reality where I use software to project my movement onto an avatar inside a virtual space. I strongly encourage you to keep up to date with modern technology. In a virtual space, gravity is created with a simple mathematical formula. There is no physical object or particle that gives a virtual object its mass. In our world, scientists are still trying to find a physical particle that gives us our mass. I believe they will not find such a particle because gravity in our world is also a mathematical relationship between simulated objects. We will discuss that more in future videos. Please get yourself a copy of my book. It's available on Amazon.